Hey everyone, welcome to today's day trading recap. So I ended the day plus $358.50, but I, I really wanna emphasize some thing, <clears throat> excuse me, some things about the way I traded that you should absolutely never do. I did a lot of things wrong today, and the fact that I came out with a green day uh, is almost as bad for trading in the future for, for a mental framework that you're trying to build as a trader. Uh, probably one of the worst things that can happen. So I really want to emphasize, I'm going to, I want to show you what I did. And I did a lot of things wrong today. And hopefully you'll, you'll learn from my mistakes and what I, what I did today and not replicate it. Uh, what I don't want you to take from this is, yeah, you did it, but you came out green. So maybe I should try it. Please, please don't do that because um, you know, this, this can really get you in trouble and, and cripple you from a standpoint, not only mentally, but financially to a point where, you know, this is the kind of thing that could make somebody, especially a newer trader, stop trading, uh, when, it, when it could, when it can be avoided. And so let's take a look, uh, to start with two mighty nineties, both losers, uh, Boeing minus four, uh, 467 Tesla minus 1300. Did a pairs trade in Russell versus Dow, booked $173.50. And then on the runners, uh, got slaughtered pretty good until one of my mistakes that turned out positive, but I came back with a, with a uh, trade in the NASDAQ later in the day when the, when the, uh, when the markets were falling apart and, and basically got it all back. And that's how I ended up positive. But again, uh, I say ended up positive. I mean, my P and L ended up positive. I don't think there's really a lot of positive things about the way that I traded today. Now, to be fair, we got slapped around a little bit by a, a market that was not normal, uh, in air quotes, normal. There's no such thing as real normal market, but there's some things that happened that, that put us down and, <clears throat> excuse me. And anyway, let's just go over these. I want to, I want to kind of explain it as we go through them. So in Boeing, this was a mighty 90. So had this initial flush lower, uh, came down. I got long about right here, uh, kept flushing, uh, bounced. Uh, I added down here at the unchanged mark, bounced. So we got two green bars. I, I should have been out of the trade there and booked a profit. Uh, I did not. Uh, the market was getting strong and I decided I was going to treat this mighty 90 like a runner. And I, I held on and, and then it just kept bleeding, bleeding, bleeding. Finally, finally ended up just cutting, cutting out and taking a loss. Okay. So that's mistake numero uno. Uh, let's go to Tesla, which is our, uh, <clears throat> another mighty 90. And so in Tesla had a, had a, a flush lower, got long right here. And then, um, this thing just kept going. Uh, Mark was getting weak. So I didn't add to it. I was, I was putting on some other positions and, and doing some other things. So I did not, uh, I don't believe I added to this one. Let me double check that real quick. It seems like I might have, um, 919. Yeah, no, no, I did not add. So I ended up just, oh yeah, that's right. So what happened was we got this big bearish volume bar on this move down. So when this thing just bounced a little bit, I just got out and took my loss on that mighty 90. Now, what I did here, and, and there's nothing wrong with what I did, uh, the market just slapped me in this case, but uh, this pushed up, and so I wanted to, I, with a big volume bar, I was looking for a downside runner, so I thought we might, you know, everything was getting so weak at this point, uh, I was looking for a position to get short in, so I turned around and reversed it, uh, got puts here, looking for a continuation lower, and so I got double whammy, I got hit, uh, trying to get long on this flush. And, uh, when I tried to get short on a bounce, I got, I got crushed there too. So, uh, lost on the mighty 90 and then on the runner, um, let's see, what was my P and L on the Tesla runner? Uh, yeah, a little over a thousand. So, uh, so I got short here, waited, waited, waited. I did get some back here where I got short up here at this, uh, unchanged mark. And when, when I got this little, uh, pullback, I closed that out. So I booked a nice profit on that, on that ad right here, but, uh, but took a beating on this, on this, uh, ride up. Okay. So that's, that's my Tesla trade, both the mighty 90 and the runner, uh, other runners I did Apple. So let's take a look at Apple. 
So this was where, so the market flushed lower, came back up. It was, it was uh, banging around here, got long, got out of some, uh, came back down, tried to get in again, and then just got flushed out. So ended up taking the loss there. Uh, Airbnb was actually one of our early runners that we took before things got too crazy. Uh, or actually, yeah, we did, we did take it, take it on the chin when it started, when the market did start flushing, but this big push up, nice big volume bar, typically you're going to get a bounce and continuation in that direction, but this thing just flushed out. So we ended up finally just closing it out after we got a little bounce right here. Uh, beyond is another loser. So if we look at beyond, so in beyond, uh, this was a uh, similar situation here. Uh, let me just double check beyond. Where did I get in there? B N B Y N D. Uh, yeah, so these were, oh yeah, so this is a put. So we had this uh, big volume spike here. So on this bounce up to the, uh, up to yesterday's low, I was looking for a bounce and a continuation lower. Again, this was when the market was super weak, but this thing just continued to rip. And so ended up having to close that one out for a loss. Uh, Netflix, this was one that I took after the, after the stream was over, I was posting it in the, in the community, um, started to, uh, get a nice profit here. Um, when Netflix started to, let me just make sure here of, uh, if I don't record this video right after I'm done trading, sometimes I forget exactly where I get in. Uh, but in this one, okay. So we had a couple of different, uh, well, so we got in at 11.01, so that was right, yeah, okay, so that's right, yeah, so price pushed up, it was consolidating near the highs, uh, the market rebound started getting really strong, so we were trying to jump back in, so I caught a piece, uh, I tried to get filled, tried to get filled, uh, never, never did, so I waited for it to come back uh, right at this point here. <clears throat> Got out of half on this little bounce, and then the rest just started flushing. That's when the really market started really flushing, cut out, uh, and took a loss on that one. Next trade was NVIDIA. And in NVIDIA, same, uh, same kind of thing here in NVIDIA. Let me just double check my timing on this one. So in Nvidia, we had a couple different trades. One was a one was a bullish trade. So at uh, 8:45, oh yeah. So that was actually a mighty 90. Uh, so actually, I need to separate that on my sheet. But so we tried to get a mighty 90, uh, and when it started to bounce, we cut out of that because the market was getting super weak. And then we reversed, kind of similar that we similar thing that we did in Tesla. We're trying to catch a continuation lower, and then this thing just pushed up. And so we got, we got double whammy, kind of like we did in Tesla. And so that was NVIDIA. And then lastly, NQ. So let's go to the futures and I'll show you what was going on in the overall market. And remember, we, we take cues uh, to trade the stocks uh, based on what the overall market's doing. So this may not, you know, just looking at the chart, this may not, may not look like a whole lot, but when this thing started flushing, I mean, it, it really started flushing. We were getting big, massive volume bars. Uh, so we were looking for potentially weak market, uh, at least during the morning, if not all day. And then this thing came down, started consolidating, and that's when we started getting short some of those other stocks. We were looking for a little bounce to get short. And this thing just ripped right back up. And so the thing that was a little bit abnormal about today was the fact that we had this just huge weakness and then huge strength in bounce. Now, there's a lot of times when the market is, is weak and then it gets strong, but it usually just doesn't happen in a V shape like that in such a quick fashion. Um, usually you got a, you know, a couple pushes down, a couple pushes sideways, a couple pushes up and a little bit of two-sided action, but this was just like, boom, boom. And so we got, uh, we actually got triple whammied. We were trying to get long on some of this flush, got flushed out, tried to turn around and get short. And then, you know, and then we tried to, uh, get long again. Once it, we, it looked like the market was going to confirm that it was going to be strong. Then that, that's when the real flush just happened. So it was a very tricky day of trading. So let me show you what I did in the NASDAQ because the, the position I took, there was absolutely nothing wrong with that. But the fact is, I knew I was down big on the day. And 
what I did is, is I started trading the, the NASDAQ futures. So instead of doing options, I mean, the whole market was getting weak. And there's, you know, talks coming out with Powell about inflation and that kind of stuff that, that really triggered it. Just like everything was getting super, super heavy. And so I definitely wanted to get short. What I, what I did is I used the big NASDAQ contract. And, you know, just, and, and it was, and it was, and I even posted this in the day trading community. I said, you know, I'm, I'm using, I'm using the NASDAQ here. This is probably a little bit of a revenge trade. Well, on second thought, looking back, it wasn't a little revenge trade. It was a full blown revenge attack trying to get my profits back <clears throat> that I, that I had lost earlier in the morning. And so that's the biggest thing that I really want to encourage you all not to do because while it worked out today, I'm very disappointed in myself for, for doing it. You know, it's, it's kind of one of those things that I haven't done that in a long, long time. And it's one of those things that I've, I had, I had done kind of as a newer trader and I kind of thought I was over that, you know, I kind of thought I got over that hump. I'm not going to do that stupid kind of thing anymore. And then I, I go and do it today. And you know, so, so from that perspective, it's just, it's something that you don't want to do because that, that could have turned out really badly. It could have turned a really bad day into a significantly bad day. Right. And, and you just don't want to do that because then what happens is you come into the next day, if you're even there to trade again, you know, at, at that point, a lot of people may take the rest of the week off, take two weeks off, stop trading altogether. So you, you don't want that in your mindset. Um, and, the, and, the, and then what happens is, as a, especially as a newer trader, you do something like this and it works out, then you think it's okay. And so next time you get in that situation, you do it again. And that's the absolute worst thing that you can do is, is make that a part of your, it's okay to do this type of strategy because it's, it's really not. You know, usually we take some futures trades in the room, not very often, but usually when we do it, we're, we're using micros. I mean, we're using, you know, the smaller uh, one-tenth the size micros. So in this case, it would be uh, the micros would be forward slash MNQ. In this case, I went with the big boys. I went with the with the NASDAQ forward slash NQ. A couple of things about that. One, you know, it, it's not like it's too big for my account, but it's significantly larger than what I typically trade. And if, and if I'm going to be, and if, if, if I'm going to trade this account, especially with you all in front of the community, you know, I've, there needs to be a little bit more consistency. So if I'm typically trading the, the, the micros, I should have been trading the micros if I wanted to stay in the game and try to get a little bit back. But in this case, I was feeling, you know, a little bit revengeful. I was, I was feeling the situation uh, you know, I did feel like the market was getting really weak. You know, everything was going down. We, like I said, we had all these, this sentiment coming in and taking cues from some of the different stocks. And so I, I was pretty confident the market was going down, but there's no way I really should have been trading the big NASDAQ futures. I just, I just shouldn't have, um, you know, I, because here, here's, here's the way you want to look at this. If I had already booked, let's say thousand, 1500 bucks for the day, and then I, I looked at the chart. Would I have come in and started trading these big NASDAQ futures? The answer is absolutely not. I, you know, there's no way I would have done that. I, in fact, I probably would have been done trading, would have took my, took my wins for the day and said, hey, good, pat myself on the back, good day of trading, buddy. But instead, I had, the, you know, I, I had this mindset. And while it was a little bit conscious, I mean, I even posted about it, that it was kind of a revenge trade. Um, you know, you just, it's, it's just not something that you want to get in the practice of doing. And so basically what I did, so the setup that I took, that was absolutely valid. I mean, we had this nice flush down back towards the lows of the day, had these big volume spikes that were higher than the first five minutes. And so we were looking for a potential continuation. So when this thing bounced, uh, I, I, I sold short a couple of NASDAQ contracts there, and then I added another one there. So I had three on. And then this thing just just flushed. I took one off here, and then I scaled out of the other two as we got down. Uh, this thing did bounce up, and I tried to get short again. Started to roll over, and then when it popped back up, I just cut out. So, ended up booking you know almost twelve thousand dollars on that one trade to get back to a positive P and L. Uh, but again, I, I I just I hope you all understand where I'm coming from, and I hope you don't you know take this as hey look at me I had a green day because that's 
that's absolutely not the case. I, I really want you to take the emphasis that I'm trying to try to provide on don't do what I did today because it could have it could have really it, it could really severely uh, hurt you financially and it can and more importantly hurt you mentally as you're trying to build your 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 trade hacker mindset going forward. So we're gonna have a lot more stuff coming out. We've got a podcast coming out on uh, the trade hacker mindset and and some of these things. And so uh, can't wait to get that out to you all. And let's make tomorrow a good, consistent, well traded day, and uh, and end the week on a strong note. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. I look forward to seeing you in the room tomorrow. See ya.